I'm Martin Delobel. I'm data engineer at uh, Decathlon. I work in the data business unit, more specifically in the sales data domain team. And uh, it's such an honor for me to be here. And uh, today I talk about how to build and deploy a data validation solution at scale. To begin, just a few words about uh, Decathlon. We are a leading company in the sports market with two main activities, the creation of sports products and their distribution online and uh, in store. Since 1976, the ambition is to innovate in all domains to better serve the sports enthusiasts. And we are not only a retailer. At Decathlon, there is no lack of data to develop new solutions that support Decathlon's strategy on customer experience, environmental responsibility, or uh, our supply chain. So, talk about transaction. Um, each year, we generate uh, half a billion transaction uh, from our uh, more than 1,700 website uh, stores and more than 70 websites and marketplaces. And at Decathlon, what is a transaction? We use a standard format, which is called the, the post log. It is a XML file. And uh, inside, we have more than 300 fields. Like Bill said this morning, it's a heavy format. And at Decathlon, each producer, each country is responsible for the data generation. And uh, that's a big challenge uh, for us because depending of the level of maturity, we have uh, disparities uh, between countries. In fact, it's like uh, even if we have a standard format, we found errors. That's a parallel I found with, uh, with this guy uh, at fitness. Maybe this guy sh could, uh, should be coached by John. <laughs> I can give you an example. Um, last year, cashier was doing a return he scanned the, the barcode, but it was not working because it was unreadable. So he decided to capture the barcode number in the price field. <laughs> and what happened? We load the wrong information in our system, and we killed all the company margin. So the CTO called us at 3 a.m. to fix the problem. So to avoid the, this type of uh, side effect, we launched a project this year to, to replace our talent SQL-based uh, pipeline. Our target is uh, in a data engineering team to load the transaction in the data lake. So actually, the, uh, the, in the architecture, all the transactions are loaded and stored in the Kafka centralized clusters at Decathlon. And uh, our mission is to load uh, it in the data lake. At Decathlon, we have um, Databricks Medallion architecture uh, for the data lake. It is divided in uh, three parts, bronze, silver, and gold. The first one on the left, uh, which stores the raw data, so in XML. We do the transformation with, uh, with Spark, mainly for I.O. and distributed calculations. We could have done it manually, but it was easier for us to use uh, Spark encoders, and because ZIO schema don't deal with XML and, uh, and Parquet. You can see that we use Delta format in silver and gold. Delta is just a Parquet plus uh, acid type transaction. The silver uh, zone stored uh, the clean and confirmed data, and we have a last level in, uh, in the gold. Uh, which inside we can find the uh, business level aggregates. Today I want to focus on how we can have clean and confirmed data in the, in the silver zone. So the first step to do that is to create uh, the transaction data model. As you can see, we have a case class here. I'm sure you can find uh, something wrong with this. In fact, we have all uh, optional fields in the, in, the left, in the left. It is uh, why we call it an untyped case class. And our target is to pass from the left to the right and have typed case class. For example, here we have a 
tax object and it is untyped on the left. Is the objective is to have a typed object. So, for example, on the amount field, we pass from an optional string, which is the most agnostic type, because maybe it will be missing at the reception to, to a double uh, type. So at the end, the objective is to have a structured schema because in the silver and gold zone, our internal customers have to be able to deal with our uh, data, for example, the forecast, the retail teams, or the AI. So I want to talk about the, the validation. We choose to use the ZIO prelude validation type. And now I will show you an example of our validator. So in fact, in the input, we have an untyped retail transaction, same thing like I presented before, and the two possible outputs. So in blue, in case of success, we just send the retail transaction to the lake in delta format. And in case of failure, we just build a small object, uh, which is called the validation error. Inside, you can find the feed log, which is uh, the name of the class, the transaction ID, which is our key, and uh, the cause of the failure. Uh, in this example, it is an empty field. This, this validation error object uh, is sent to a DynamoDB database where at this point we are able to do some uh, alerting, dashboarding, or monitoring. Our target uh, here is to animate our country, our producer, to reach a better level of quality. One thing I wanted to say today is uh, the cascade validation that we can find, that we can uh, do with, uh, with Zero Prelude. In fact, when we receive a uh, transaction in our system, we call the transaction validator once, and implicitly, we call all the other validator. So in fact, we accumulate all the error in, uh, in parallel of the, of the success. So in the same time, we, uh, we load DynamoDB and the data lake uh, in parallel. That's why we called it the cascade validation. And that at this point we have the magic of uh, the DIO happen. Here you can find uh, an example of uh, DynamoDB. Uh, what we have inside, it is all the error that we are loaded. And you can find the, the small list of fields that I uh, previously presented. So thanks to, thanks to ZIO, Prelude, and Spark, we have managed to tackle the following challenges that would have been very hard to tackle otherwise. In fact, we ingest and manipulate a huge amount of uncontrolled and unstructured data. We have no precise data quality management. And we easily validate and get errors uh, at scale using the validations. So, uh, I would like to thank you for your attendance. I would like to thank all my team who helped, to, who helped me to, to build this presentation, especially Ayub, who helped me a lot. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>